we're going to move on. Next up for us, 1 p.m. Eastern, Minnesota Vikings, 7 and 1, 3 and 1 on the road at the Buffalo Bills, 6 and 2, 3 and 0 at home at Highmark Stadium, Orchard Park, New York, 40 Fahrenheit, 15 mile per hour winds, and sunny on Sunday morning. Let's take a look at the line history first. And I imagine that this is available at all books. If it's not, it would be Pinnacle that would be afraid to put it up. And let's see if they are. And they are, as as I imagine they would. A bookmaker opens this up at seven and a half. There's been no movement off the seven and a half. Let's see what Ben Online is doing with this one. Ben Online has this opened up at nine and a half. And now at five and a half. So Ben Online's done the biggest move with this one. This total opened up at 49 and a half and has dropped all the way to 45 and a half. I guess you would look at those moves and think Josh Allen's not going to be under center. That's not what I picked up from all the research I did today. Uh, that That's not, no one's rushing to that. But we'll find out. The big practice is tomorrow's practice. 7,401 tickets in, 66% of tickets, 85% of cash on Minnesota. 71% of tickets, 90% cash on the under. A Vikings coming off their sixth straight win, a 2017 road victory at the Commanders. Gives them their best start since 2009. Cousins, 22 of 40, 265 yards, two touchdowns, one pick. Justin Jefferson caught seven for 115. New tight end TJ Hawkinson caught nine for 70. Dealing caught three for 67. Dalvin Cook ran 17 times for 47 yards, caught two passes for nine. The Vikings defense stepped up when it mattered most. They finished with three sacks and seven quarterback hits. Harrison Smith had one interception for 35 yards. Cameron Dantzler left in the first half with an ankle injury and didn't return. Uh, yesterday, O'Connell said it's a long shot for Dantzler to play. So they're going to bring in their rookie fourth rounder, Caleb Evans, and he's going to be forced in the starting role. This Vikings defense allows 7.4 yards per pass attempt. That's the third highest in the NFL. And their last in opponent's red zone touchdown percentage at 78.95%. And Dalvin Tomlinson missed the game with a calf injury, and we'll get an update tomorrow's practice. But this is an already very weak pass defense that Heineke can't exploit. And it got worse with Dantzler out of the lineup. The Bills had their four-game winning streak snapped in the 2017 loss of the Jets, fell to 0-2 against division opponents, and the big story is Josh Allen injures his elbow late in the game. And there were so many conflicting reports. We heard immediately that it was a UCL injury, that it would require surgery, that he'd be out four to six weeks. Then we heard that he would be limited in practice. And then from, from McDermott, he said that he needs time to fully grasp the situation. And he was calling it an ailment. This is not something serious. He said, we're just going to go through it. We're still evaluating it. I'll know more in the next 24 hours. So... There's a lot of reports that expect him to be under center. So uh, Sky Dragon still saying, is Allen playing? Uh, uh, Spenny saying, I think Allen will play. Fr and I'd love to hear your idea on it, Andy, because a lot of what we do is we gamble. This is a perfect, this is what like a bet right now. You're either betting that Allen's going to be under center, or you're betting that he's not. And, and it's you know part of your action here. But what I took from it, uh, we'll know tomorrow. Uh, that's the next time McDermott's scheduled to speak. But I think he's trending to play. Josh Allen with 18 of 34 for 205 yards, two picks. He ran nine times for 86 yards and two touchdowns. Held without a TD pass for the first time since week 17 against Atlanta. The rest of the Bills running game struggled. Sing Singletary, Cook, and McKenzie ran 13 times for 48 yards. Stephon Diggs caught five for 93. The Bills' defense finished with just two sacks and three quarterback hits. They couldn't stop the run late in the game. The Jets went from their own four-yard line with 7.53 left to the Bills' 18 with eight straight running plays then they lose greg rousseau week to week injury it's a high ankle sprain defensive end gone so jordan poyer tredavious white and matt milano all missed the jets game uh, tredavious white was activated from the injured reserve we thought maybe he'd play but he was inactive and matt milano was questionable with the oblique and then he set out after you know we, we i thought he was going to play and he's been nothing short of spectacular this year so if, again, there's so many moving parts to the injury-wise, and we'll get a better idea in the McDermott press conference tomorrow. What are your thoughts here? I know you got a big uh, angle on Allen for MVP. Uh, I can't wait to hear. It yeah, game. that was painful to see him have another bad game and then uh, Patrick Mahomes doing what he does and flipping that market. Now it's a tight three-way market on the top. I don't know, like – 
I'm not going to say a lot about this game. Both defenses are worse than I had projected. The Vikings defense is much worse than I projected. And even Case Keenum, Case Keenum has taken a team to the NFC title game, man. Case Keenum is a very good backup. Like, oh, this is a midpoint number, I believe. I think it's just like we saw with the Tennessee number where it was 12, 12 and a half. And then it said, you know, you said it right on the show. If it's Tannehill, it goes down. If it's announced no Tannehill, it goes to 14. That's what happened. I didn't even get the best of the number on there because once it was announced, it went to 14. Same kind of thing here. If it's announced Josh Allen's missing two weeks, three and a half, four. If it's announced he's in, you better hurry and run to the window because the six is going to seven and a half and the total's probably going to pop back up. I think he plays. I don't think you, I don't have a strong enough opinion about that to actually lay the points right now. But man, Minnesota hasn't beaten anybody good. Minnesota's been trailing to some sad sack teams and had to come back. Um, this is very tempting. It, I, I might even wait to hear Josh Allen is 100%, and I'd lay a seven if I knew for sure he was in. So I'm waiting. This is the, the Minnesota Vikings are not a top five team in the league. They're a good team. They're not great. And this defense could get roasted. Like you said, Dantzler wasn't even good. We're going to a guy that couldn't beat Dantzler out, so that's going to be a problem. Both defenses are sketched, though. I think maybe, if anything, waiting on the weather and Josh Allen, and if the weather's okay and Josh Allen's okay, this total is probably five points too low, honestly. And I know it's been a tough year for overs, Boy, I'm I'm I'd make this over like 49 and a half with Josh Allen in good weather. You make an interesting note on Case Keenum. What if you get a three with the Bills at home with Keenum uh, at quarterback? I'd, you... I'd probably cons- I'd consider that as well, especially if the weather's good. I might look at that over as well. Um, remember the last time he was thrown to Diggs up there against the Saints in the playoffs? That was a fun game. Like he's he's got a live arm. He's a good backup. So I don't know. It's, it's just it's not a Minnesota team that's deserving of a lot of respect in the market right now from what they've done against much lesser competition. The Bills are still a very good team. You know, you can take what you want from the last couple of weeks, but they're still a very good team. I agree. I agree. Look, I we got in early enough that we got the three and a half on Tuesday with the commanders at home mm-hmm. against the Vikings. Nice you you and I take a ton of heat for the way what we think of the Vikings. I don't know if you read the comments, but people shit all over us about our they feel like we're not respecting the Vikings enough and, and we don't. Uh, that's a fair well, I don't yeah I don't think they're a bad team. It's just they're not, you know, they're not a top three, top five team. Like some people are, you know, Florio had them second in the power rankings. Like Jesus, you know, go look at the market. You know what this team would be you know, compared to Kansas City on a neutral, look where they are. I mean, they're they're four points worse than uh, quarterback to be announced in you know on a neutral to Buffalo. So this is yeah, this is a this is a team that's good, but they're not good. Good. Uh, Birdie saying if Allen is announced as playing, I will hit this over as quickly as possible. And Bills minus six. If Allen plays, Diggs will have a monster game here versus old team, and the Bills will score. All right, and Diggs. Diggs is kind of a <clears throat> like, like he's petty. Like he, he'll, he'll want to have like three tutties. I would love, <clears throat> excuse me. I would love the opportunity to back the Bills here, and I'm just waiting to get more information, and we'll get it tomorrow at the press conference. We'll get it tomorrow at the press conference. So we'll see if Andy moves on this as well. He will let me know, and I will tweet it out for everybody here. But I. Would love to get in on the Bills. I'd love to get in after that loss. And I would even have a lot of interest in them with Case at quarterback, getting a better line. There you have it. And we'll also find out about Milano. So um, Milano is such a big piece. you got to expect Tredavion, Tredavious White is going to be back. Uh, and then I, we still don't know about Poyer. But uh, all he said was they're all, they're all improving is all he said. Yeah. 